and welcome to the Joey and Jay Show. I'm Joey. And I'm Jay. And we're here with driver the number seven in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, Justin Allgaier. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm good. I'm really good. It's uh, We're in Bristol. It's one of my favorite racetracks, so it's hard not to be excited for today. Yeah. And it's also exciting for the fans, too, as you guys always put on a good show. And uh, what do you think we get started off with the questions? I'm, I'm more than okay. Let's start it off. All right, Jace. On race day, what do you normally eat to prepare for the race? I'm not good at eating on race day because I tend to forget. There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, a lot of a lot of people don't realize how much stuff happens on race day outside of just being in the car, right? So we spend a lot of time uh, with our team. We spend a lot of time doing stuff like this out here at the autograph session at the apparel trailer or different things like that. So I tend to forget to eat. So for me, um, if I had my ideal, I would eat pasta on race day. That's probably my, my favorite. But other than that, don't really have a good good option. What type of pasta? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a connoisseur of any pasta for me. As long as it doesn't have chunky tomatoes in it, um, I'm good. It doesn't matter if it's Alfredo sauce or cheese sauce of any kind or, or uh, meat sauce, marinara, doesn't matter. I'm, I like any pasta. Well, I want to know... Since car numbers are an important part of stock car racing and its history, if you could drive any number, what would it be? Ah, uh, so for me, when I started racing, my very first number was five. And I think numbers are very kind of, um, we all pick favorite numbers based on something, right? Whether that be a family member or a favorite baseball or football player or a favorite race car driver or whatever it might be. Um, so for me, uh, my dad was, was number five whenever he raced many many years ago and so i've kind of fallen in love with the number five and and that's that's been my number um i like seven a lot obviously it's it's a good number lucky number seven and i've had a lot of success with our number but um my favorite's always kind of been five so does that imply you're a kyle larson fan uh well i am a kyle larson fan but not because of the number i was a kyle larson fan long before that i will say um i i had my own race car for a little while and i put number two on it and I don't know why I put number two on it, but it's just a number that I put on it. So maybe two is in the mix a little bit, but I'm also not necessarily an Austin Cedric fan or, or am an Austin Cedric fan. So I don't know exactly how that works, but but I would say five is probably my favorite. Jace? Crashes happen quick here at Bristol. Could you tell us about the worst wreck you've ever been involved in? Ooh. Um. I, I would say I, I would say for me the worst wreck that I've ever been involved in here um, I got turned around going into turn three and backed into the into the wall into turn three and I hit so hard that it actually shot the battery out of the car and so they kept telling me to fire the car up fire the car up and I couldn't figure out why I wouldn't fire up but my dash and everything was was not working and I couldn't figure it out and then I realized that um, there's probably a good reason for that. And then they're like, yeah, um, NASCAR just said that there's a battery on the racetrack. We're, we're going to just say, just wait for it. Go ahead and get out. So that one was probably the, the worst one. I've been in some other ones, though, that are not ideal. Um, I was filling in for a cup race here for Michael Annette. Kyle Busch got spun out and was coming down the hill. And I was on the apron trying to get away from him. And he was trying to get out of the middle of traffic. And I was already on the apron. And I... I clipped them as he went by. So that one was a little bit like frustrating because we missed the crash, but then we didn't miss the crash. Um, but things do happen in a hurry here, and it's it's always hard to miss the crashes whenever they happen in front of you. What about uh, like the 2012, I think, Kyle Larson crash? Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny. I can picture like a lot of different crashes that you go, man, those are crazy. The, probably the craziest one I've ever been in here. Um, and it wasn't even really my car, but we were three wide coming off of turn four and Casey Kane tried to make a run to the outside and we all kind of got together and Casey's car went up on the wall and his driver's window was actually sitting flat against the racetrack and we started crashing off of turn four and he didn't stop until the middle of turn one and two. He slid all the way down the front straightaway and into turn one and two on his side. That one, that one was pretty wild. I've never really seen anything like that one. So there's been a lot of really crazy ones that, um, you never really know what to expect here. Well, you've had success in the Xfinity Series, and you've also had some good runs in the Cup Series at points in time. But So are you looking to return to the Cup Series at some point, or do you want to stay and keep that 
major success coming in the Xfinity Series? Um, I still feel like there's some unfinished business on the cup side. I would love to go back cup racing. But I, but I also feel like the opportunities to drive a really good car in cup are a lot a lot smaller than than um, than I would like for it to be, right? And, you know, the Cup Series, especially now, the cars are very, very similar. There's a lot of things that make the cars more even. But it's still people and it's still the way everything goes together. It has to be a complete team effort. And if you don't have the full team, um, I don't care how good of a driver you are. You, you're, you're just not going to have the success. And even, you know, we've looked in history and there's been really good drivers that have gone to really good teams and they've not had success. And there's been drivers that maybe aren't um, billed as the greatest drivers and they go to a smaller team with maybe less money, but they have these really good runs and they run up front. And I think a lot of that comes down to, to chemistry and just communication. You know, communication is such a big part of our sport. And if you don't have good communication, um, it's kind of game over. So um, knowing where I'm at now, we have a great team. I have great people around me. We have great communication. And I think that's what leads to us running well. So if the right opportunity is never there. I, I love where I'm at and it, and it works out perfectly for myself. It works out perfectly for Brant and Fresh and Iron Culture and what they want in a, in a program. So it would be hard to walk away from that. It would have to be the perfect opportunity to change. Jace? Well, she has a question. Oh, there you go. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, so you have a very fast-paced career with lots of travel. How do you balance being um, so such a present father and having such a busy career? Ah, uh, well, um, that was a tough one because honestly, I'm not as good at it as I would like to be. Um, a lot of sleepless nights though. You know, I uh, my wife just posted about it not long ago, but, but we raced in Daytona on Friday night. We flew home. Uh, my daughter had a softball tournament on Saturday. We were under rain delay in Daytona. We got home late. We ended up getting diverted to a different airport. I didn't get to my house until 5.44 in the morning. And we left to go to the softball tournament at 6.05 a.m. And went directly to a softball tournament. So, um, you know, those are the types of things that for me, you know, I'm very lucky in, in the fact that, you know, I'm busy a lot. We travel a lot. But my, my family does get to travel with me a fair amount. And then also, like, during the week, there are certain times of the day when I'm, I'm able to be home that maybe... Um, are different than if I were to work a regular, you know, eight to five job. So, you know, in, in some aspects, I feel like we have some positives to our sport. There's also a lot of negatives, a lot of drawbacks. Um, you know, my daughter, my daughter Harper is nine, and and you know, I, I look at I look at her, and um, I've had moments where, you know, I have to leave, and she's crying because you know she doesn't want me to leave, and I think that those are the moments that for me are the hardest. Um, I wouldn't leave them if I didn't have to for my job. Uh, and, and at some point when I decide to say, Hey, I'm done racing and I'm going to retire. Um, I can assure you that it will be with them in mind and not anything else. You know, a lot of drivers say they struggle to walk away from the sport because they enjoy the travel. They enjoy the, the success or whatever it is. And for me, um, I don't think it's going to be as difficult to walk away because I know that I'm going to be able to spend more time with them. So we'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, Proud of my family. I, I love my family to death. I got a great family, and I'm enjoying what I do. I need uh, my other question here. Oh, wait, it's Jace's. He's got a here instead of the coat, too, so we're going to try to keep it. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to join us here on the Joey and Jace show, and good luck today. Thank you. I appreciate it. And, uh, Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Michael, and everybody at Junior Motorsports for giving us this opportunity. So, thank you, Justin. Good luck. And for more content like this, go to joeyandjace.com.